Hello, welcome back to my channel. So I'm going to do a video today on the um, the difficulty, the target, and the bits in Bitcoin. And these kind of th these terms get sort of used sometimes interchangeably, and there's a lot of confusion about what what they actually mean. Um, and it's actually quite difficult to, to find some um, some definitive documentation that tells you exactly what they all are and how they relate to each other. Um, they they relate to each other um, very closely, and this video is, is going to be all about breaking down that relationship uh, once and for all uh, in quite a low level of detail. So it's going to be quite a technical video. It, by the way, this it, you know this is this is a topic that's kind of um, not essential to understand the bit the Bitcoin protocol or the or or indeed more importantly the the blockchain concept. Um, but it, for those of you who are sort of more detail oriented and, and want to kind of get a better understanding of, uh, of of how how the how the difficulty for each block is actually calculated and how it evolves over time, then stay tuned and hopefully I will explain it for you. So in the world of Bitcoin, you'll obviously you'll you'll often hear the target talked about very often, and you'll hear a a, a metric called difficulty. And you'll hear about bits, or you'll see actually more, more often you'll see bits as a um, a, a variable that is uh, that's reported in each block, right? It's, it's part of the block. Um, and bits is an attribute of a block. So these three are closely related, and um, and, and I think of it often like a triangle. It's like in photography. So um, it's similar similar kind of thing here. And and I want to sort of break down this this whole thing further now. So when it comes to target, so a lot of the time, a lot of a lot of documentation that you read about in Bitcoin. Um, Including, including my uh, first video introducing this topic was kind of suggesting that the target, okay, the target for a Bitcoin miner is to produce a hash, right, which has a certain number of leading zeros, right. And the, the example I gave was was a, a particular block in which the the target or the the hash, of the, the actual the actual hash of that block had 17 leading zeros, okay. I'm not going to draw that out, but basically it's a 17 times zero, and then plus. And then some, you know, five C two E F, da, 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 da. some 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 hash, um, you know, of, of, of that of that block that satisfied a requirement that there had to be seventeen leading zeros. Now, I've got to kind of come clean here um, and say that to say that the target hash for miners that all you have to do is to hash the block, hash the block, keep tweaking that uh, that nonce and and, and th that those variable data points that that allow you to change the inputs. Keep doing that until you get a hash with let's say 17 leading zeros or 18 leading zeros or however many leading zeros the, the Bitcoin network is currently saying is the required difficulty. It's not quite as simple as that. Um, and I, I'm not quite sure why it's... Um, I guess it's probably simplified just, just because to illustrate the concept, it's kind of neater to say, find a hash that, ran, you know, that just happens to have a certain number of leading zeros. But in a nutshell, right, what, what, you, what the, the target really is in, in terms of Bitcoin mining, is, is is quite simple, right? And it's basically the target is a 256-bit number, right? So, 256-bit binary number. Now, binary numbers, as we all know, um, are represented as uh, normally represented as zeros and ones. Um, they don't have to be zeros and ones, but you know the whole point of binary is that um, you know it's it's basically a, a two-state uh, numerical system. And so we represent a 256-bit number as something like 00010001 da 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 all the way up to 256. So 256 of those digits, right? And that gives you your binary number. Now, so what we're saying is that the, as we all know, hopefully by now, if you haven't seen the previous videos on hashing, then um, please please have a look at them. So the the block header is going through a 200 sorry 256. Um, bit hashing algorithm, right? So the output is going to be 256 bits and the target, so instead of saying the target has to, that the target has to start with a um, uh, 17 leading zeros in hexadecimal, um, the, the reality is the target is such that the, the hash of the block has to be less than the, the target binary number, less than or equal, my apologies, right? So often a, often, you know, the, the two are correlated as in obviously, you know, a, a number a number in binary that has more leading zeros is obviously a lower number. So if you find if you find a if you find a hash that has more leading zeros than the target, then obviously your hash will be successful. But it's quite possible that you will find a. And this is the, the you know, if you this is the particular kind of corner case. It's perfectly possible that you'll find a hash which has the same leading zeros as the target. So you, so in this case, if the, if 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 the um, if the target had 17 leading zeros, it's possible that your hash would actually be a greater binary number than than the than the uh, than the target, 
right? Even though it has 17 leading zeros. So the, the, the key point is that the target is just a 256-bit um, binary number, okay? And, and, and the, the, the winning hash is equal to or less than that target, right? So it's not quite as simple as saying there are, you know, it's just so many leading zeros. And if you think about it, right, if, if it were the case that the, that the, it was just about number of leading zeros. So from 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 week to week, or let's or more specifically from two weeks to two weeks, because as we know, that's that's roughly how often the the target difficulty gets adjusted. If that were to happen, that it's only the matter of seventeen, seventeen leading zeros changing to eighteen leading zeros, changing to nineteen, changing to back to seventeen. If that were the case, then the only flexibility in terms of adjusting the difficulty would be to make it either twice as difficult or half as difficult, because each time, if you if you say okay that the binary hash has to start with three leading zeros one week, right? But then the following week has to start with four leading zeros, then you're basically you're you're making it twice as difficult, right? Because each leading zero decreases your search space by half as much because it, because it's binary, right? So clearly this is not the level of flexibility that the, that the Bitcoin network wants or needs, right? That they need to be able to say um, every two weeks, right? Every two weeks. How long? So I'm going to just write this down. So each each two weeks, what they say, as in what the what the what the Bitcoin um, nodes who who are basically validating and and determining what the difficulty on each block should be, they say essentially. Um, so what's the current the current difficulty? And I'll go into more details about what that actually means. Right, multiplied by the time to generate the last. 2016 blocks, right? Divided by 2,000, sorry, 20,160, and this is in minutes, right? So clearly, and, and and this quantity here, this this big thing here, this is used to create the next difficulty, right? Or more specifically, the next target, right? So actually, I'm going to scratch that out. And say next target because as you saw, for, um, difficulty is actually something quite different. But the target is this number that we're trying to get a hash that's less than that than that number, right? So, so basically, what we're saying is that I'm trying to illustrate the point that if so clearly, the the ratio between the time for the last two, 2016 blocks and the number of minutes, right? This is the number of minutes in two weeks. That ratio is quite a granular ratio, right? And that's the whole point. We want to be able to, to, to adjust adjust this difficulty on a more granular level than, than either doubling it or halving it, right? So so all I'm trying to say is, and it's a you know kind of a, a I guess a long long winded way of saying it, but the the it's not I'm just gonna write it here, so it's not just leading zeros, right? Or in fact, let's just say it's not about leading zeros, right? So just just like internalize that in your head, right? It's not about leading zeros. It's ultimately about target. The target, and this changes roughly every two weeks, is a 256, 256 bit number, right? And the, the the winning hash, right? The winning hash, the valid hash block that a miner produces is basically less than or equal to that number, right? So that's the myth that I'm trying to dispel here, and I'm going to go into more detail now about what's the difference between um, and, and what what and what they all are, how you drive them, difficulty, um, bits, and target. Okay. Okay, so we're back on blockchain.info, and I'm going to go into a couple of fields that we haven't actually looked for um, on on the previous videos. And the two the two fields that I really want to focus on in this video are the difficulty, which in this case is one. Now that this is um, this is our good old friend block number zero. So this is our genesis block, um, the first block ever in the blockchain. And I want to both these both these values here are very very important when you're talking about difficulty. Okay. Now um, we're going to talk about what difficulty is. We're going to talk about bits is. Now in in the I'm going to take you know take it uh, step by step. The first um, first of these difficulty bits and target things I talked about was a target. So explaining that the 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 hash which you can see up here. Right, which which was the, the the successful hash for block number zero, the the Genesis block, that has to be less than a specific binary number, right? A, a 256-bit binary number. This hash has to be less than that for it to be successful. 
and that number is this one here. Now, that looks confusing. First of all, that's not a binary representation, that's a decimal representation. Um, but this number here, first, and you also think, well, you know, 256-bit number is like a really long, verbose number. Um, this is only a few digits, and obviously it's a different base. This is a base 10 representation, and 256 is a binary number. But you, but this number here tells you everything you need to know about the exact number, the exact target, which defined what the successful hash had to be equal to or less than for this particular block. Okay, so that's a decimal number, and I'm going to show you another blockchain explorer. Um, because in this particular case, um, the, the, the hexadecimal representation of bits, um, and, and I didn't really mention, so bits bits is in any block, right? If I just pick a random block, like 3, 4, 6, 7, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, bits of that block tells you, in a kind of specially encoded way, what the hash target was for that block, right? So you can work back from this and derive a, a big, long binary number that tells you what the hash target was, right? I'm going to tell you exactly how that works in a second. All right, so let's go back to block number zero, right? And there's another there's another blockchain explorer, which is really cool. Um, I really like it. Um, it has some sort of slightly different presentation styles. Um, it's called Smartbit, and I'm going to go I'm going to go there. It has exactly the same information. Don't forget, so blockchain.info and Smartbit and whatever other, you know, blockchain explorers there are, they're all just basically front ends that, that look upon their, their respective copy of the blockchain, which is duplicated all around the world. So, you know, I just really want to hammer that home. There's no server, central server, that has the blockchain data. So I'm going to just go for block zero, right, the Genesis block again. And I'm going to go here. And so here we can see that, um, so the, 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 the hash for this block ends in E26F. If we go back to block, um, blockchain.info, E26F, just to show you that it's the same, same data set. And on Smartbit, Smartbit is an Australian company, um, and they're kind of trying to develop a, a kind of a more, um, let's say, search-friendly and uh, like the sort of the Google of, of, of blockchain, the, the ability to, to, to really sort of um, do proper, sophisticated searches on the blockchain data. So um, definitely check that out if you're interested. Um, I'll link it down below. But the you can see this is the first this is the first ever block, okay? And the difficulty is one. We'll come to that next. The the bits is one D. Zero zero F F F F right. I'm going to write that down in the next uh, on the on my screen uh, uh, screen thing in a second. But one D zero zero F F F F is the bits value in hexadecimal for the first ever block right. Um, and what I want to do is I want to basically break down exactly how to derive the target from this bits value because target and bits basically are interchangeable right. So the, the target is that big long 256 bit binary number. But bits is a compact way of representing that number in hexadecimal. So we know that the bits, the bits value, which is, is, is a compact representation of what the target was in any block, right? We know that the bits value in the Genesis block, right, was 1D00FFFF. Zero zero F F F F. So what does that actually, what does that actually mean, right? Um, how do you convert this, right, which is a basically a, a four byte four byte number and this is represented in hex how do you how do you convert that into a 256 bit or 32 byte hash target right now the first thing you're probably thinking as well first of all I I cannot unless there's some truncation involved I can't represent a 32 byte number in four bytes, and, and that's absolutely correct. And 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 we'll see in a second that the the targets are actually um, they're truncated to um, to a certain number of significant figures, and um, and that, that's that's the way it works. And that's all about um, again the truncation is, is to kind of you know minimize the amount of uh, of of, of um, space taken up on the on, on the blockchain right with with these hash um, targets. So so basically the way the, the way this works is uh, is is actually quite straightforward, um, although at first it can be quite intimidating, it's quite difficult to find any definitive uh, documentation on it. Um, but, so the, the way it works is obviously you need to think about how to expand this number out into binary, but this, I'm just going to take a different color here, these four bytes, right, I'm going to take a different color, oh, there you go, these four bytes here, right, which is our bits value in each block, right, we have one byte here, and then we have one, 
two, three. So four bytes. Each, hex, each hexadecimal digit is obviously four bits. So two hexadecimal digits makes one byte. If you're confused about that, leave a comment. If you want a proper dedicated video on hexadecimal notifications, uh, sorry, uh, uh, notation, then let me know and I'll, I'll do one. Um, so the, the key point is that the first byte of the bits, right, the first byte is basically the number of number of bytes that, that, that the target number takes up, right? Now the maximum number of bytes that the target can take up is 256. Sorry, it's 32, because there are, thir there are 256 bytes in total. Sorry, 256 bits in total, my apologies. And there are 32 bytes inside the two, 256 bits, right? Um, eight bits in a byte. So the, so the first byte tells you basically of, if this is the, if this is the overall space in 256 bits or 32 bytes, 32 of these, right? In one space, it tells you how, how many bytes are used to represent the target. And then all the, all the remaining ones are zero, right? So that's, this is a hexadecimal number. Um, it's one byte, so it can go anywhere between, um, so the minimum number for, the, for this is, is two, and the maximum number is um, 255. Right, but um, obviously we know that we can only have a maximum of 32 bytes anyway, because we only have 32 bytes to use here. Right, so so we don't use all the values in here, but that's that, that's fine. Then the remaining three, the remaining three bytes, so zero zero in this in this case zero zero ff ff. Remember this is the this is the byte this is the bits value for the first ever Genesis block. Right, these define the most significant figures of the target. Right, the most significant figures of the target. Now, I'm just going to quickly switch to decimal um, to give you a, a just a kind of an analogy here. Right. So this this is so this notation here is known as compact compact format. Right. So it's a compact way of representing a a 32 byte number in only four bytes. Right. So if those of you uh, some of you might be familiar with uh, floating point, right? Floating point arithmetic. Um, and this is kind of like a floating point notation, right? Now, let me give you an analogy. Let's say that you had, um, so let's forget about hexadecimal for a second. Let's say, we're, so we're going back to our good old decimal numbers, just straightforward, 0 to 9, you know, and then 10, 100, 1,000, da, 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 right? So let's say um, we want to, we have four digits of space, right, to represent decimal numbers, and we say, so you want to express a decimal number using four different four digits, right? Now, if you if you make this one the first the first digit here, you say, okay, well this one gives me the total number of digits of my of my number, right? So if I and, and I only have one space here, so I can't I can't write seventeen here, right? I only have space for one digit. So if I write nine here, right, that means that my overall number is taking up nine nine digits, right? And then the remaining three digits. Are, are used to specify the, the three most significant digits of the number, right? So if I put four, two, five here, then what that so then what this means is that this this number here, this way of representing this number, corresponds to four, two, five, which is the most the three most significant digits of, of our number, um, and then we know that we, we nine is the is the total number of digits, so we basically have six remaining to put, right? And so this convention is a way to represent this number, right? So we're saying these significant, these significant figures, and then pad it out so that the total number is nine digits long. I'll give you another example here, just to just to hammer the point home. Um, so four and one three seven. So one three seven is the total number of digits. Um, sorry, it's, my apologies. One three seven is the significant figures. So one three seven. The total number of digits is four, so I just pad with one zero, right? And this is kind of like a way to represent. Um, it, it, so we can. It's, it's kind of like a similar to floating point notation, where we say that the the um, this is the the mantissa, right? So the co the coefficient. <coughs> my apologies, sorry, the coefficient, and then and then this is well, it's not the it's kind of the exponent, but we say the convention here would be that. Um, so this is our um, let's let's say this is our uh, digit 
length, right? So we would say our actual number is the coefficient, so 137 times 10 to the power, 10 to the power what, right? What's the, what, so 10 to the power, it's not the digit length, it's the, it's the, the digit length, digit length, minus the, um, minus the, the number of digits to, that we are including as our significant figures, which is, which is three, right? So digit length minus coefficient digits. Yeah. So digit length in this case is four coefficient digits. So we're using three digits here, three significant figures, one, three, seven, that's three. So the answer is one, three, seven times 10 to the one, which is just one, one, three, seven, zero right which is the number that we originally wanted so that's an analogy in decimal and that's exactly how the compact notation works in in uh in this compact no uh, bitcoin uh, protocol the only difference is that the numbers are just a little bit bigger and when i say a little bit bigger they're a lot lot bigger right so i'm going to try and keep this number um in the frame here and i'm going to say so in compact notation instead of having four hex sorry four decimal digits we have four bytes Right, four bytes. One, two, three, four. Right. Now, the thing about bytes is so one byte equals eight bits. Right. So for example, zero one zero zero one zero one one. Right. That's one byte, and that's eight bits. Right. Now that that's in binary. Now what? So in one byte there are two five six possible values. Right. Two five six. Now whereas in decimal Right? So in, in decimal, there are 10 possible values. Right? That's what decimal means. There are 10 digits. Right? Um, there are basically 0 to 9. In, in one byte, we have 2, 5, 6 possible values. Right? So all the different combinations of 1s and zeros in, 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 in 8 zeros and 1s, there are 256 possible values. Now, if we, know, if we think about a hexadecimal notification, uh, notation, why do I say notification? Um, if, uh, in hexadecimal, what we do is we group four bits, right? Each group in a byte, and then we and then we consider um, the, the 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 possible values from naught to nine and a to f, right? For each of them. So so hexadecimal goes from um, from basically so one byte can be zero zero. That's the minimum value for a byte in hexadecimal, and the maximum value is ff, right? And ff in decimal is 255 five, and zero, zero, 00 in decimal is obviously just 0. Okay? Now, the, the leap of faith we've got to make here, it's not really a leap of faith, but it's just like a, it's, it, it, it's slightly different. You know, it, it makes you really think about numbers. That's why I really love this stuff about um, you know, the, 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 the Bitcoin and blockchain stuff. There's, there's so many opportunities to kind of really get back to thinking about what numbers really are, and, 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 and it kind of gets a bit philosophical at some point, and you kind of think, oh, God, this is... It's pretty crazy, but it's kind of fun as well. So, um, if you think, if you think that of all the possible hexadecimal values for a byte ranging from zero zero to ff, think of them, think of each of them as one specific digit, like one specific symbol. Then, in actual fact, right, you can actually represent each byte as a as a sort of a, a double digit. Let's call it a double digit hexadecimal number, right? And the key is to think of Think of FF as like as one symbol, one one cohesive symbol representing the decimal number two five five. Right. So, so basically, what we're, what we're effectively doing is converting, right, to base two five six. Right. So, base ten is what we're used to. Base two is binary. Base two five six is saying, right, we're now in a counting system where we basically count up um, from zero. To 255 in one particular column and then before we carry over right so i know i'm going into quite a lot of depth here but um the and if you if it's not clear then please leave questions below and i will explain them and i, and I will clarify it right so but the point is that the 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 first bit in this four byte bits section right this defines how many bytes our target is going to take up just like this one here, let me change the color again, in decimal, this value here defines how many how many digits our overall number that we're trying to represent takes up, right? So 
And this, this number here is in hexadecimal, right? So in the case of our Genesis block, right, which if I just scroll up a second, that was 1D, right? The first byte was 1D, right? So our first, first byte was 1D, and then the second byte was 00, zero and then the third byte was FF, and the fourth byte was FF. So let's break that down. Well, what does that actually mean? That means that the number that, 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 that this target represents is, first of all, it takes up 1D bytes, right? So how many bytes is 1D? Well, 1D, 1D in hexadecimal is basically uh, 1 times 16 to the power 1 plus D times 16 to the power 0, right? Now, D, D in hexadecimal um, is, we can go back to our uh, hexadecimal converter, we can see that D corresponds to number 13. So 1D corresponds to 29. So 1D, 1D equals, in decimal equals 16 plus 13 equals 29. So what we're saying is our target takes up 29 out of the 32 bits, right? We know our, we know our target, right? The target is 256 bits equals 32 bytes, right? We're saying 29 bytes of this 32 are taken up with these significant bytes, right? Now, once again, the values in here, think of these as individual digits in a base 256 number system meaning there are 255 possible sorry 256 possible values for for this particular box right and ff is one symbol in that box right so what we're saying is the the these three bytes are our most significant bytes of a, of a, of a a of a 29 byte number which has to fit inside our 32 bytes right so we have basically we have um, 0, 0, FF, FF, right? So that's, that, that, that's, that's a byte, that's a byte, that's a byte. And then we have 26 bytes of 0, right? Because that, the, these are the significant bits, as in, so, um, and then everything else is 0. And then on the front, we have 32 minus 29 equals 3 three bytes of zero, right? So, so that, that's, what our, that's what our Genesis block hash looks like. Now, that's, that's a lot to get your head around, but it's actually, it's actually not, it's not that complicated when you, when you think about it. It's what you're basically saying is, in, in base 256, you're saying it's this number here to the power, raised to the power, this number, in hex minus three, and it's exactly the same as what we did. If you're confused about this, just keep going back to this example here, right? Where we said we allow four digits for our decimal number, right? So we want our decimal number to be four digits that we're representing, and the the leading digits on the decimal number, with everything else zero, are one three seven. So one three seven, and then everything else is going to be zero, um, and then pad it out to four digits, and it's exactly what we do here, exactly the same thing. You take whatever's in these these values here, and then you basically just write them out, and then you say whatever's remaining from 1D, 1D is 29, 29 bytes, so remaining 26 bytes we pad out to zero, and then pad the front to 32 bytes because it's 256 bits in total, um, and, and that, that gives you your, uh, your, your, your target, right? So that's how you go from bits to target, bits to target, right? So, so far we've seen how to convert from bits to target, right? So bits is what we see in the in the in the blockchain, right? We can see on every block we see bits. We can, we know how to convert that bits value to what the actual hash target is in, a, in any given block. So, for example, the, so just to recap, in the Genesis block, we saw the bits value was in hexadecimal, which is basically this prefix. The the um, the, the value was one uh, d. 0, 0, FF, FF. And to convert that into an actual hash target, we take the last three bits, so last three bytes, sorry, of, of, the, of, the, of the bits value. So the, 
the, the, in this case, the 0, 0, FF, FF. And then we basically say, well, these are, so we just write these down, 0, 0, FF, FF. And then we look at the, num and then we look at the first bit, the first byte, sorry. And we see in hexadecimal, how many bytes does this re represent in hexadecimal? In this case, it represents 20, uh, 1D is 29. So we know that in total, the hash target takes up 29 bits. So three from here, and then another 26 bytes of zeros. So one, two, da, 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 all the way to 29. And then the remainder is zeros on the front. In this case, because we have 29 out of 32, we have three bytes of zeros, right? And this goes for any any uh, any bits value in any block that you want to you want to read. That's how you interpret bits and convert it into the actual hash target. If you want to convert this, if you want to sort of um, expand this into the proper two two hundred fifty six bit hash target, then you expand out these hex values, right? So each of these each of these bytes corresponds to eight bits, right? And you basically just expand expand each hexadecimal digit. Um, out into its full binary notation, right? So, so, so that's hopefully clear on that. So, what I want to talk about now is the the difficulty aspect. So, difficulty really is just a a, a human readable representation of, in relative terms, how how difficult that target was to reach from one block to the next, right? And the key thing here is if we go back to our Genesis block, which was which was this this target here, which was designed by the you know by the system to be the the first the first appropriate initialization target. There was a number associated with this target called difficulty, right? And the difficulty of the Genesis block, right, was one, right? So think of it like it's like the the benchmark. So the first block is defined such that the difficulty is equal to one, and all subsequent blocks and the difficulty of achieving a hash. Right, is all measured against the difficulty of the very first block. Right now, we know that the very first block had a target of this value here, or this value here in hex. Right, and that's defined as being a difficulty of one. Right, so difficulty in in essence is basically so if, I, if we write it down as so difficulty d. Right, d of any block equals the the, the maximum target divided by the current target, right? So maximum target is is this. So the higher, don't forget, this, so the higher, the, the higher this number, the higher this 256-bit number, the easier it is to find a hash that's less than or equal to that number. And that's T max. So T max is T genesis. And T is the current, the actual current hash target. And the difficulty d is the ratio of the two right so if so basically if at any given time let's say if we if we see a block that has difficulty of two right the number two what that means is that the the t max divided by the current target equals two right which means that the so the what it effectively means is that the current target is Half, let's write it out. So t current equals t max divided by two. Right. In, in other words, the target, the actual hash number that we have to produce a, a block hash that's less than or equal to that number, is half what it what it was set to right at the beginning in the Genesis block. This. So I want to kind of um, go over exactly why. Um, I want to have a look at some of the first few blocks in, in, in the blockchain, right? And 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 see um, how the difficulty evolved over time, right? So if we if we just jump to our browser, so here we can see um, there's a, a website here that shows us the, the the chart of the difficulty over time, right? The difficulty over time, and you can see I can trace down along here and see over time. So starting in in, in January '09, the difficulty, as I said, started at one. And if we trace along here, so June, July, August, September, October, the difficulty was still one, right? In in December 2009 and up into January, the difficulty starts increasing to 1.31, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, 1.5, 1.6, 1.7, 1.8, 1.9, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 
three, four, and then during 2010, it ramps up quite quickly to 500, 700, 1,000, 3,000, et cetera, et cetera. And then by 2014, it's rapidly increasing, right? So the question is, we know that the difficulty is basically just inversely proportional to the, um, the, the actual hash target. So clearly the hash target um, is going down over time. So I've, uh, I've, I'll just go back. And, but what we can see, what, what we saw is that the difficulty stays at one during most of 2009. Now, we know that every two weeks, the, the, the Bitcoin network, um, every node on the network is recalculating, okay, what is the next appropriate target, the next appropriate hash target to set for the next 2016 blocks, such that we tend towards a, an average block time of 10 minutes. And we so we look at the amount of time that the last two, 2016 blocks took to, to complete. And then we, we compare that with the, 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 the time period of two weeks. And whatever that ratio is, we, we, we multiply by the current hash target to get the new hash target. So the question is, why did the, why did the difficulty stay at one for so long? Right? So here we are back at block one. You can see the difficulty is one. And as I mentioned, the difficulty is one because it's defined as, as one for the first block. Right? It's, a, it's the benchmark. So the first block is defined as having a difficulty of one. So if we look at the second block, it also has difficulty of one. That's that's expected because we expect the difficulty and 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 therefore that and well and and the, and, the, and the hash target to remain the same within a block within a, a within a sequence of two thousand and sixteen blocks. Right. So we expect block one and block one thousand. Right. You can see at block one thousand the difficulty is still one. We expect that to be the case. But we might expect if we go to two thousand and say two thousand eighteen. Now, now we are in the second. We're in the second block, second period of 2016 blocks, and yet the difficulty still stays at one. Okay, and and, and the the reason behind that is if the one of the one of the the parameters around the difficulty recalibration is that the difficulty is never allowed to go less than one. Right. So if we look at the if we actually look at the um, the the timestamps. Right. So if we look at for example, so if we look at block number 2015, we see that it actually took. 24 days, 24 days to calculate the, 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 the first 2016 blocks. Now, 24 days later is much more than two weeks, right? Much more than two weeks. So if we, if we go back to our, um, if we go back to our page and we know, so we say, we say that the, and we say that the, so the target n plus one equals the target of n times the time for the last 2016 blocks divided by, this is in minutes, divided by 20,160. That should indicate, so given that the, so this time here, is this, is this is essentially two weeks, right? So this, this number here is more than 2,060 because it's more than two weeks. So we would expect, we would expect the, the, the target of block number 2017, or 2016 rather, to be larger than the previous target. Right? We expect the target to, to go up. But if the target goes up, that means the difficulty goes down. Right? Because if you remember, difficulty equals t max over t. Right? So if, if, the, if, the, if the target goes up, right? if this goes up, then this is going to go down. But there's a, there's a hard limit in the system that says that difficulty is always greater than or equal to one, right? So there's a, there's a hard limit there. So even if we take longer, if we take longer than two weeks and the current difficulty is, is, is one, we don't adjust it. The difficulty stays at one, right? So that's why we see the difficulty stay the same throughout most of 2009. So during 2009, right, from January, all through Feb, March, all the way through to, to December, the the it was taking more than two weeks to generate 2016 blocks, and that's why the difficulty stayed at one, because the target was not allowed to 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 to, to go up, even though even though the this formula was dictating that it should, because there was a hard limit, there's a hard ceiling on the target, right? 
there's something if we look at um, a particular block you can see when when the, when the difficulty started to go up right so if we see if we see um, the following so if we look at, at block number three thirty thousand two hundred and forty. So block 30,240 30, arrived at on the 18th of December 2009 at 9.56 a.m., right? This is almost 11 months after the first block. And then the, the next block, and, and, and the difficulty of this block was still one, right? So that, up to that point, every single, every single block of two, 2016 blocks had taken more than two weeks to generate. But on this occasion, when block number 32,255 came out, on the 30th of December 2009, at 5.58am, okay, so that block, if you see, for the first time, this particular block, this is, this is two, 2016 transaction blocks, and they appeared within 12, 12 days of each other, right? So per this formula, this T last 2016 blocks was actually for the first time was less than was less than two weeks, right? In which case, the difficulty for the next 2016 blocks was increased for the first time, right? And we can see this from if we look at the blockchain um, website. So if we look at Block 32255, this was the last block where the difficulty was 1. It was issued in 30th of December 2009, has a difficulty of 1, as has all the previous blocks up until this point. But if we look at the next block, 32256, we see the difficulty goes up to 1.18, right? 1.18. So this is a really good use case just to sort of delve into it a little bit. So 32, 32256, is is 16, 16 intervals, 16 two-week time intervals into the blockchain, right? So, and on this day, for this block, it said, okay, we are, we are, the, the block height here is a multiple of 2016, so we're going to recalibrate and see, see whether we need to update the difficulty. And for the first time, the previous 2016 blocks took less than two weeks to calibrate. And therefore, we, we upgraded the difficulty by this much, according to the formula, uh, which, we, which, we, which we have on the, on the screen share. And now, the bits of the new block is a new value for the first time. And if we look at this block in, the other, in our um, smart bit, so 32,256, if we look at block 32,256, Right, and we see the difficulty again is, is, is 1.18. We see here they report the difficulty in bits, right? So it's 1D00D86A. So 1D00D6, sorry, D86A, which is this number here. So if we just, just to hammer home the point about what we said about how to convert the, the, the bits into the target, right? So the target, so we write, so these. These are the most significant bytes of the of the um, of the target. So we write these down: zero zero, d eight, six a. And this is the number of bytes in total that the target takes up from this point here, which is again one d, which is twenty nine. So we have including these ones one two three, and then we have twenty six extra bytes of zeros and then we have three extra bytes of zeros on the front and that's our new target that's our new actual hash target for the new block right so that's really interesting to see it illustrates that that the even though the target recalibrates itself every two weeks there is a hard limit and it can never the difficulty can never go below one and it's really important that to, to, to bear in mind the difficulty is really just a a, a derived value that's, that's essentially based on the current target and a, and a constant, and the constant is the first ever target in the first Genesis block, right? So going back to where we started from, so we know that so bits is the compact representation 
of the of the current target, right? So the target is the two five six bit hash number that our that our block hash has to be equal to or less than. Bits is a compact representation in kind of um, base two five six floating point format. And difficulty difficulty is basically the max target divided by the current target. And the max target is the target from the genesis block, which is in hexadecimal 1D00FFF. So if we actually go back to our blockchain.info site, so if we look at the current block um, as of the, uh, the 9th of October 2016, we can see that the, the difficulty is massively higher than it first was, right? So it's actually, um, it's got, so it's basically 258 billion times more difficult to generate a, a successful hash for this block than it was for the Genesis block, right? It's just a ratio. Um, it's, it's comparing the difficulty with this block with a, against a reference point, which was the Genesis block. And, and that's, that's basically because th this shows you how much more hashing power, how much more, how many more hashes per second are available on the network now as, as, as compared to when, when, the, when the, the system first got up and running um, back in 2009. It's 258 billion times harder. And that's why it's, it, it's essentially down to, you know, um, to you know, ASIC uh, equipment and uh, you know, way beyond the, 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 the realms of, of a kind of somebody running this software on, on their laptop to, to mine a block, right? Because it's, it's so, so much more difficult now. And then the, the, the new value of the bits, again, uh, as in the latest value of bits is this. Um, if we go back to our, our smart bit, we can see this is the latest block. We can see that the, again, the difficulty is 258 um, billion and the, the bits is 180044C4, right? 180440C4. So that is our entire fully expanded in hexadecimal, that's our entire target number. So any hash that is less than this number, or equal to this number, is, is a successful, was or would have been a successful um, uh, candidate hash for this block. So guys, I hope that was useful. Um, it's not the easiest subject. Um, it, 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 a lot of the documentation is a little bit confusing, and I think the message that, above all, that, that, that it's just about getting a certain number of leading zeros, is I understand it's, it's a simplification that's made to to make the explanation accessible to, um, to to people without having to fully understand what a, a drawn out two five six bit number looks like, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But it's really a misconception. And and for those of you who are interested in in sort of understanding what the difficulty is, what the bits is, what the target is, I hope this kind of cleared it up a little bit. Um, if you've got any questions, please leave them down below. I'll, I'll get back to you. Um, and uh, you know, really want to sort of clear this up for people. It's not the most important thing to to understand. Um, if you want to understand the basic concepts behind Bitcoin. And blockchain but for those of you who are sort of digging around a little bit thinking mm, well what's this uh, what's this bits number and how do i reach it and then how does it relate to difficulty and and what's the target etc then hopefully this has been a little bit uh, a little bit useful there so thank you very much for watching and i will see you in the next video bye